Blessed to be here. Real, real quick, is Na- Naomi, where's, where's my girl Naomi at? Can you stand up? Go in the aisle so everyone can see you. So I'm... That's uh, John and Sarah Flick's daughter, and um, I witnessed her lead someone to Christ in Home Depot two days ago, literally. Literally. So, yeah. So she's, uh, the kids are on fire. The, ki- the Lord's on the kids, and it was amazing to see, like, literally, it, I was following her around Home Depot, literally. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I was like, yo, Naomi, where are we going to go? And she's like, the garden center. And we're, I'm like following around. And the young adults and Elise and Chris, and they're like following. It's amazing. So the Lord's doing all types of amazing things. Um, so first off, I want to say I'm not special or I'm not, I'm not better than anyone. This is more like an invitation It's more of an invitation when I'm on as well. And I believe this house is really going there together. And it's pretty evident in worship. Wednesday nights and Sunday morning, it's a thirst for him. It's a thirst for him. And it's manifesting in this house. I'm talking about the Eagle Mountaintop life, like that high mountain life that we're all called to, that's above the snakes and the scorpions and all the creepy things down there. We're supposed to be like up here. That, that's where we're going. I, I, I really believe it. It started for me this way about four months ago. The Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and the Holy Spirit said, you always had the roar, but you never had the adore. And I was like, what? It was like 3 a.m. I was like, brother, I got to write this down. I was like, I don't understand it, but I'll pray about it. And in the quiet time with the Lord, the next morning, he revealed to me, I was always so militant with God. And there's nothing wrong with that. Discipline's good in the Lord. But I didn't adore him. Adore means to love deeply. And ever since, I've been on a journey of love with him. Like a marriage with Jesus. That's what he wants. He wants a marriage. He wants us to be the bride. And it's crazy because this is I have, my anniversary today is my wife this date so yeah (laughs) so it's a lot of prophetic things going on right now but (laughs) but the Lord wants a marriage I'm a big intimacy guy I love the secret place I'm a believer in that truly 90% of people's issues around the world is because they don't hang out with God They don't hang out with God. They don't worship Him. They're stuck in themselves. And and if you're going through it right now, I'm not condemning you. Some people are going through it right now, and spiritual warfare is a thing. Deliverance is a thing. Inner healing is a thing. I'm not saying don't do these things, but what I'm saying is there is another piece to the puzzle, and it's to adore Jesus Christ. Worship and intimacy with God is not about us. If we're not careful, our intimacy with God will look like this. Me, me, me. Lord, when I get the ministry, maybe I'll... Lord, how about this? I want this anointing. Hey, I see my buddy walking in these gifts. Can I have, like... Of course, we can ask all things from our Father, and He gives great gifts, don't get me wrong. But there's something special when we hang out with Jesus not wanting a thing. Just wanting Him. Just loving Jesus. It's like, God, I want you and. The and will destroy you if you let it. 
The end will mess you up if God's not first. He has to be first. I don't care if you're a janitor, and hey man, janitors probably make more than me. I'm a fourth grade teacher. I'm not, I'm not saying anything wrong with being a janitor. There's nothing wrong with it. But you can be a janitor unto the Lord. That, that's what Jesus wants. If you know me, I love Exodus 33 with Moses. It's like one of my favorite chapters. You can do a whole conference on that chapter. Moses said, show me your ways that I may know you. That know means intimacy with God. And further in the chapter, he said, Lord, if you're not going with me, I will not go. There's a lot of people who tell you plans and say it's God, but it, it's not. It's not God. You have to, like I, I, last week I was on the floor with God, like, Lord, if it's not you, I don't want to do it. That's where we need to be. There's a lot of counterfeits out there. The Lord will do it in your life. The path of the righteous is level. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. We act like God can't do it a lot of times. We act like we have to say the special prayer, then the door will open, then he'll do it. That's not true. Jesus Christ will do it. How do we do it? By loving him. That's it. Christianity is loving Jesus. Christianity is knowing God. That's it. We act like his priority is what we do for him. That's like down here on the list with God. We act like that's the first thing. It's not. Like we're not supposed to try. I love street ministry. And when I'm not trying, the Lord shows up the best. I, I, I've, literally, I've literally seen Demons cry out when I'm not, I'm not even trying. I'm just like, Jesus, go. Do your thing. Demons, go. It's not when I'm like, in the name of Jesus. Like, it's like, just demons, go. It's not me. It's him. Like, that's, that's the, it's him. It has to be an overflow of spending time with Jesus. This is one of my favorite quotes ever, and I can't, I can't take credit for it. And I saw it at some random church service. And the minister said, said this, if the devil can't make you a Judas, he'll settle for a Martha. So if he can't make you a traitor, he'll make you very busy doing a lot of good things. And if you don't be careful, your identity will become in that and not Jesus. And I'm just saying that because I'm guilty. So I'm not saying I'm special in any way. I'm not saying I figured it out because I'm not special. But if you don't be careful, you can become guilty in that. And then confusion will come into your life. Pastor Todd said on Sunday, beware of false prophets. My friend Nancy says all the time, she's like, Jezebel loves the prophetic too. Now, we got a cool prophetic house here. They check each other. That's the, they got a team. They check the spirit. You know, that's important. So what I'm saying is be careful. Be careful of the prophet. You go to some random prophet, and he says, the Lord will close the door tomorrow if you don't make a decision, if you don't quit your job. Just be careful. I'm telling you, be careful of those things. Because I fell into that trap. And I was in confusion. And where there's anxiety and confusion, that's where the enemy is. Don't despise prophecy. Because the Bible says not to prophecy. I've had such good words from the Lord prophetically in this house. And it helped change my life. So do not despise prophecy. Prophecy, but what I'm saying is be careful. 
We get into confusion when our eyes are off him. Lord, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to be in this and that? Oh my God. And it's all about us. We're supposed to be like this and say, Jesus, take my life. Do whatever you want. I don't even care what I do. There's a special place where you don't even care what you do for him. You just drink Jesus and love him. You just want to be, like, honestly, if it was up to me, I'd be in the secret place all day. I'm not kidding. I would just love to hang out with Jesus in the secret place for hours and just everybody leave me alone. Like, I'm serious. But it's from the overflow of the secret place where I love people. So it's funny how it works. You want to know the best prophecy that's always true? Jesus is saying to you right now, come away with me. Come away with me. Like in the Song of Solomon, he says, Who is this coming up from the wilderness leaning on her beloved? We're supposed to lean on him. It's a love affair. The Song of Solomon is a love affair with Jesus. Religion hates this, by the way. Religion hates this. But it's the truth. A lot of times we're looking for a word from God instead of letting him hold us. We're looking for a word, but he just wants to hold you. That, that is intimate. That is where the power is. Many times we go into the secret place or our prayer closet and nothing changes because we don't love him. And I'm not saying we don't love him. I'm saying we don't actively love him. We don't worship him. It's the fear of the Lord is saying, Lord, take it all. I don't even want it. That's the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is saying, Lord, I want you above everything. That's the fear of the Lord. It's, it's a respect and awe for him. People say, you know, what's my calling? I'm struggling with my calling. Your calling is to sit at the feet of Jesus. That's, that's your calling. And you'll do more on accident than you'll ever do on purpose. It's, I, it's the truth. That makes evangelism easy. Praying for your coworkers easy. Serving for your church easy. Because you're full on Jesus, so you don't care. You're just going to serve, and you're going to love people. We should never want to be a somebody. Like, look at Paula Rodriguez. Is she here? Paula Rodriguez? Are you there? Is that Paula? Yeah. She, she loves Jesus. She's in the back. She just loves Jesus. She doesn't want to be in anything. She just wants to be Jesus. That's it. That that's should be our desire. Do you notice that the people who are the quietest... The most humble, the ones who worship God with other, they're not even loud. You, sometimes you don't even notice. Like, I love you, Paula, but sometimes I don't even see you. I forget you're here because you don't, you don't want to be in anything. You just love Jesus. That's the only thing that's required, by the way. That's the only thing Jesus said. That's the only thing required. We misrepresent Jesus sometimes. David said in Psalm 18, your gentleness made me great. Your gentleness made me great. Jesus came in compassion and humility. The Bible says he wasn't heard yelling in the streets. In fact, when Judas came with the large crowd to arrest Jesus, Judas had to kiss Jesus so they knew which one to arrest. So, so Jesus didn't stand out. He was with, he didn't stand out. The soldiers didn't know which one he was. They're like, Judas, go kiss the one, then we'll arrest him. Jesus, like Jesus blended in, in beyond humility that we'll un ever understand because he was God. And we, we want to be the guy. Jesus never wanted to be the guy. He just was. He just was the guy.
Well, people say, oh yeah, well, Jesus flipped tables. And righteous anger is a thing. I'm not, I'm not saying righteous anger is a thing. But it must be birthed in compassion. It must be birthed in compassion. If you have righteous anger, but you didn't have tears first, you might want to check it. That's all. But righteous anger is a thing. I, I truly believe Jesus was flipping tables with tears in his eyes. I really think Jesus was flipping tables with tears in his eyes. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. We'll find out when we get to heaven. Like when I hear about child trafficking and things like, like I, I that, uh, that, that makes me really upset, bro. And it's, because it's, it's like, it's a compassion thing. I hate that. Like I watch the news like two weeks, I can't stand the news because it just, I, I can't. And some of you should, and it's good, and you guys should be doing that. But I just, I can't. Like, I watched a high schooler punch an eight-year-old girl on the school bus. Like, like, like uh, did y'all see that? Uh, it's disgusting. Like, I, I saw that, and I just, I wanted to cry. I could, it's disgusting. That's our public schools, by the way. Just saying. Florida, by the way. It's always a heart motive. We must look unto Jesus Looking unto Jesus means putting everything else aside and looking to him. I bet Pastor Massey knows how Charles Spurgeon was saved. A preacher yelled at him, and he said, look to Jesus. That's all he said. He said, look unto Jesus. Look up. Charles Spurgeon came in the back row, and this preacher said, look to Jesus. And he was saved instantly. That's, that's most of our issues, looking to Jesus. How do we do this? What's the secret? A lot of people ask me that. Especially like in the kind of street ministry, they're like, what's the secret? I'm like, the secret. Jesus told us how to do it. He said, shut the door. Pray to your Father who's in secret, and He will hear you, and He will honor you in the open. What does it look like? I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's, it's not, we think it's this crazy revelation. You go in the door, you shut it, and you say, you don't even have to, you can have soaking music on. You don't have to be loud. You just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving me. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for your freedom. Make me like you. I want to know you, Lord Jesus. I renounce myself. I renounce myself. Take my life. Take advantage of me, Lord. That's it. And you just go. You just go. It's, it's, it's simple. Read his word, worship and hang out. It's simple. There's power in being still and knowing he's God. There's, this is a cool thing I'm doing now. Like I'm just chilling with Jesus with soaking music. I'm just like this. I don't even say anything. Like, we don't even have to say anything. Like, I didn't know that. I thought I had to be like the guy who's like, and that's cool sometimes. I'm not saying it's wrong. But we can literally sit in his presence and know he's God. And know he's going to fight for you, like the Exodus 14, 14 life. He's going to fight for you. Psalm 91 says he commands angels concerning you. I'm almost done, don't worry. David seeked God's face and the Lord made him a conqueror. That's all David did. He, he seeked God's face. He wanted God's presence. That's it. I have a quote from Watchman Nee. Does anyone know who Watchman Nee is? Yeah, the guy's a legend. I, I love guys like, like, like. So I helped start the Chinese church. His last 20 years of ministry was in prison. Like, I love that stuff. Like, that, his life was God. Like, he, you know, we have ministries and we can compartment. But that dude's life was God. And that's where we're moving to. Where our life is God. That's our life. And he said this, Outside of Christ, I am only a sinner, but in Christ I am saved. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> Outside of Christ, I am empty. In Christ, I am full. Outside of Christ, I am weak. In Christ, I am strong. Outside of Christ, I cannot. In Christ, I am more than able. Outside of Christ, I have been defeated. In Christ, I am already victorious. How meaningful are the words in Christ? It must be in Christ. It comes down to this. If everything was gone, your ministry, your dreams, your visions, your promises, your thing, would Jesus be enough for you? That's, that's an answer we all must deal with. And he will bring that question to you, I promise you. And he says, am I enough for you? So we're going we're gonna to have prayer ministers come up, but we're going to do two things. Obviously, if you need prayer for healing, there's, you're really going through it, you need someone to pray for you, obviously come up. But if you want that Psalm 42 anointing, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. If you want an extra grace of knowing God, just be honest, there's no condemnation here, man. We're all family. If you want to go after God like you never have, if you are in the secret place and you realize, hey, man, it was kind of all about me, get some prayer. Seek Jesus. Loving Jesus is the thing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today at Revive Us Now at our YouTube channel. Remember to click that subscribe button to Revive Church and share this video with a friend. And if you'd like to support this ministry, go to reviveusnow.com forward slash give.